sentence is already made out. Bob Baffert, winner of three Kentucky Derbies. It would be the pinnacle of my career, and it would be the most unbelievable thing that ever happened to me in my life. For one day each year, Churchill Downs becomes more than just a racetrack. It becomes the place where legends are made. The Derby can be very addicting. It's a happening, and it's, it's the one you want to be in. This is what it's all about. Today, 16 horses will make their run for the Roses. Their run at immortality. Bobby Frankel has won it all, except for the Derby. This year he has his best chance with the favorite, Empire Maker, and his stablemate, Peace Rule. For 129 years, the first Saturday in May has become a celebration of America. Today is the day when all the years of hard work and determination come down to two minutes beneath the twin spires of Churchill Down. Kentucky Derby. It's the quest that unites all those who have gathered beneath the ancient twin spires this first Saturday in May, creating unmatched spectacle. From Millionaire's Row to the clubhouse and grandstand, the outfits rival the jockey silks for color and variety. And the hats, all oh, the hats, required ladies' apparel on Derby Day. In the infield, the party began early and continues to this moment a raucous celebration of spring. There's always a special derby buzz when a horse fires the imagination and prompts dreams of greatness. And that's the case today with a royally bred empire maker. His trainer, Bobby Frankel, has been at the top of the sport, but has never won the greatest prize of all. And this week, news that empire maker has a bruised foot. Insignificant? Or will it open the door? Maybe for Frankel's other horse, Peace Rule. Perhaps 10 most wanted will escape apprehension as he bounds down the stretch. Or maybe the Hollywood horse, that's what I'm talking about, will set tongues wagging. They train long shots today, but ignore Baffert and Lucas at your own risk. Time now for jockeys to gather their thoughts. Do they dare dream to win the Derby? For some, it means a sip of mint julep and a ticket to cash. For one, the sweet smell of roses would be the final validation of a Hall of Fame career. The 129th running of the Kentucky Derby, it's at... The mile and a quarter distance all will carry 126 pounds for a purse of a million dollars added. And it's a beautiful day. The sun has been peeking in and out of the clouds all afternoon. The temperature a very comfortable mid-60s at the moment as we come up to Kentucky Derby race coming up in just a moment. Uh, the track is fast, and you see the horses now that have been in the last race, the Woodford Reserve heading back to the stable area, and soon the Derby horses will make their appearance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Churchill Downs. I'm Tom Hammond, and this Derby 129, the story of a human as much as of a horse, Bobby Frankel, trying to fill the only hole in his resume by winning a Triple Crown race. And this is his best chance. He has two horses, Peace Rules and Empire Maker, the favorite, who seemingly has all the qualifications, impeccable breeding, past performances, winner of the Florida Derby and the Wood Memorial, the ability to go a distance. His pedigree and four mile and an eighth races indicate he should be able to go that mile and a quarter of the Kentucky Derby. Plus, he has champion trainer Bobby Frankel and champion jockey Jerry Bailey. Now, he opened up in the betting on the morning line at 6-5. to five. That's the lowest 
since Arazi in 1992, but one of the big stories has been the fact that he has been creeping up since the betting opened. Here are the current odds. Super Blitz at 35, Brancusi 28, Sir Cherokee injured yesterday, scratched. That's what I'm talking about in Peace Rules at 7 to 1. Funny side, 13 to 1. Awfully wild, 26, Buddy Gill at 6 to 1, Indian Express, that's the Baffert trainee, 9 to 1. Lone Star Sky, a long shot, as is Domestic Dispute. There is Empire Maker currently holding at a surprising 4 to 1. And as we complete the odds for the 16 runners, Eye of the Tiger, 10 cents a shine, out of here, all long shots. 10 most wanted, getting a lot of play at 5 to 1. And one of the Lucas trainees, Scrimshaw, is at 14 to 1. And we're joined now by the birthday girl, Charlsey Candy. Happy birthday, Charlsey. <laughs> But in looking at those odds, it's been sort of a shocking development. Uh, we know that only one derby favorite has won since 1979. Fusa Ichipega sits in 2000. But are they worrying about the betters, the bruised foot? Well, it is a concern. Last Sunday in his final workout before the Kentucky Derby, he aggravated a bruise that he had suffered last month in the Wood Memorial. So they immediately, when they saw that he was off, when he returned to the track on Tuesday, they jumped right on it. The blacksmith came and three-quartered his shoe to take the pressure off that foot. They tubbed him every day in Epsom salts, and he's been getting gradually better and better. He did return to the track day before yesterday, he, or yesterday uh, he galloped. Today he galloped. He showed a little bit of that very difficult behavior, that temperament that runs in the family. But this was a part of him before the bruised foot came up. This is what he does. We can probably tell more about how things are going by Bobby Frankel's body, body language. He's known to be pretty volatile when things aren't going his way. And frankly, he's been downright jovial, really laid back all week, so he must be pretty confident. Well, one has to trust that Bobby Frankel wouldn't run the horse if there was something wrong with him. But Frankel and Empire Maker aren't the only story at this Kentucky Derby. There are lots of other subplots as well. And to review those, let's go to our handicappers, Mike Battaglia, Bob Newmeyer. Well, that's right, Tom. And while Bobby Franklin and Empire Maker deserve to be the focus of attention, it seems like improbable things always happen on Derby Day. And Bob, wouldn't it be a great story if Rosemary Homeister became the first female to win the Kentucky Derby? She's going to do it. It's going to be on a 50-to-1 shot Super Blitz. Yeah, you're right. And wouldn't it be a great story if Buddy Gill won the Derby? He grew up on the uh, Snake River Plains of Idaho, believe it or not. And Gary Stevens, his jockey, wasn't even in the game a few months ago. He was on a movie set making a movie. See this one. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a great story if that's what I'm talking about, one? Hollywood owners, a West Coast trainer, but definite ties to Louisville. Ron Ellis, the trainer. His wife, Amy, grew up right here in Louisville. Her brother, Paul McGee, just won the grade one Woodford Reserve. Amy's been dreaming about a derby winner since she was a little girl. Wouldn't it be an ironic story if Peace Rules won the derby? This is Frankel's B-horse, or second stringer, if you will, but they've had success over the years. Thunder Gulch, Charismatic. Real quiet, just to name a few. How about a great story if Wally DeLossi wins with 10 most wanted? He was fired as uh, from the train from the Thoroughbred Corp, a powerful stable. Now he could win it with the owners he had prior to that, and it would be just a great story if Wally won the Derby. And it would be a historical story, Mike, if Funny Side won. And his trainer, Barkley Tag, first time Derby starter. This is a New York bred. No New York bred has ever won this race. And he, along with Buddy Gill, are the only geldings in this race. You have to go back to the stock market crash of 1929 to find the last gelding to win this race. You know, you know what, Tom? By the end of the day, whoever wins this Kentucky Derby, it's going to be a great story. As it always is, Mike, uh, but there are plenty of stories to follow today. And, of course, it wouldn't be a Derby story without a look at the infield. Only one of member of our crew is brave enough to try it. It's Kenny Rice somewhere in that mass of humanity. Kenny is checking it out. Hey, Tom, and uh, welcome to the Derby infield, the other side of the track. Over 50,000 people are here again this year. They have paid $40 a piece. That is $40 just to get in, part of the Kentucky Derby experience, because they won't get to see the race today, certainly not from this vantage point. But just like every year, we have a new crop of three-year-old thoroughbreds that come here. We also have a new group of college students that come from all over the country. And like Ohio State, yeah. And they enjoy it so much that they come back year after year, turning this into a perpetual spring break. We have 50-year-olds here who at one time brought their transistor radios to listen to Bob Dylan, now mingling with 20-year-olds who are listening <laughs> who are listening to some other kinds of music that most of the 50-year-olds can't relate to, but they enjoy it just the same. 
Although personally, I like to listen to no doubt music, which some of the guys were just a minute ago. Anyway, as you can probably tell, they jump into this, they jump into this eternal, perpetual spring break each year into this 100-proof fountain of youth. And Tom, I'll tell you one thing is for certain. Lots of shirts, thousands of shirts will be lost here this year without anyone taking off their clothes. <laughs> we may not have seen the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm happy Kenny survived, I think. I'm also happy he didn't take his shirt off during that report. I told you it took courage. Well, Bobby Frankel has not only dominated Derby talk in these days leading up to the run for the Roses, but he is dominating the races today. As we speak, he's already won three graded stakes on the undercard at Churchill Downs. Al Barron won the Churchill Downs handicap under Jerry Bailey. And then it was Pete Hayes in the Sitco Distaff Turf Mile. Jose Valdivia in the irons for that score in the Judmont Silks. And then Sightseek won the Humana Distaff under Jerry Bailey. It has been already a fantastic day for Bobby Frankel. In fact, in the Woodford Reserve, the only one he didn't win, he ran second. So the Frankel barn has been a busy place this afternoon, and that's where Donna Brothers is right now. Donna? Tom, I am here at the Frankel barn. It, today's day for Bobby Frankel would be a hugely successful day by anybody else's measure of success, except Bobby Frankel's not going to be happy unless he wins the Kentucky Derby. At 4-1, to one, it looks like some of the betters have backed off of his horse. I can tell you, his barn has been surrounded by fans, by press, and his barn staff has been jubilant, and believe me, they're not done. They think they have one more race to win on the card, and they're set to do it. Tom? That would be the one, Donna, and uh, if you'd like to this edition of the Kentucky Derby, and Empire Maker continues to be a surprise. Let's check the current odds. Super Blitz and Brancusi are long shots. At what I'm talking about at Peace Rule. Still at seven. Funny side, 14 to one. Awfully wild at 25. Buddy Gill, winner of the Santa Anita Derby, five to one. Indian Express, nine to one. Lone Star Sky and Domestic Disputes are long shots. Empire Maker now down to seven to two. That's three and a half to one. Then Eye of the Tiger, 10 cents a shine out of here. 10 most wanted at 5 to 1 and Scrimshaw at 14 to 1. Well, we told you Bobby Frankel has really been on an incredible roll. Already three graded stakes wins on the Churchill Downs card today. And last year he saddled the winners of nearly $18 million. He won 43 graded stakes races. 40 years ago, he was hoping to just pick one good winner at the window. Me being on the racetrack was uh, a million to one when I was a kid growing up. Uh, growing up in Brooklyn, all I saw was cement. Uh, when I played ball, I played on the blacktop, and very rarely I ever saw grass, to be honest with you. I lived in Far Rockaway, maybe 15, 20 minutes from uh, Roosevelt Raceway. My uh, parents took me there one night and gave me a program, and I started studying the program, trying to figure out who's going to win the races. They gave me a few bucks to bet, and I was hooked right there. I got onto the racetrack actually by mistake. I was betting on the horses at the time, and I met this trainer, and he, he put me on his badge list, and I got a license and a parking sticker. It saved me $3 just to get into the races. It's just, uh, I guess it's just nature, uh, fate that I ended up on the racetrack, because uh, here I am for 40 years. Four decades at the track has seen Bobby Frankel go from being a gambler in New York to one of the most successful trainers in all of racing. His credentials are impeccable, yet there is still one glaring void. A Kentucky Derby winner. This year he may have the horse to fill out his resume with the favorite, Empire Maker. From the very, very beginning, people were expecting a lot out of him. In this game, you say things, but very rarely do they come true. But with Empire Maker, he's fulfilled his expectations. This is probably the best chance I'll ever have going to the Kentucky Derby, for sure. That's the one race that I've always wanted to win. I mean, you hear people say, I don't care if I win the Derby or not. I might not win it, but I do want to win. It would be the pinnacle of my uh, 
of everything in my life that ever happened, and uh, this is what it's all about. And there's the gap. This is where the horses are led from the stable area onto the track to make the walk around the oval to the paddock where they'll be saddled for the Kentucky Derby and soon Bobby Frankel will accompany Peace Rules and Empire Lakers at that point to begin the walk over. And Charlesy, I guess uh, it's an ironic sign of our times. Here's Bobby Frankel, Jewish born in Brooklyn, New York, saddling a horse for a Saudi Arabian prince, Khalid Abdullah. And it's further ironical to me that a boy who is raised in the concrete city life has such an intuitive feel for a horse and I think that's Bobby's greatest gift it's almost like he gets inside their head and inside their bodies and can see it before the horse shows it he's uh, he's got a great feel and he's very smart and he's a good detail man the same with Wayne Lucas Bob Baffert all the highly successful trainers are huge on the detail I think the to his career as a handicapper helps him train horses as silly as that may sound I just really think it gives him an understanding of the the game and where to place horses and not take too much out of them. Well, that's one of the most important things about training horses is putting them in the right place. What's the old adage? You always want right. to keep yourself in the best of company and the horses in the worst of company. But today, his horse is in the best of company. So he's obviously confident that Empire Maker's foot is well. I think it's certainly not anything you ever would want to have happen. I mean, it, we want everything to be absolutely perfect this week. But he has dealt with it, and it doesn't seem to bother him. And we shall see if he were right or wrong. The public was scared, and now they're coming back. The horse's odds are going down. This has become one of the most dramatic parts of the Kentucky Derby, that walk over. And a lot of owners now understand that. It, it can make you weak in the knees to stand over there on the backstretch and look at this throng and to think of the immensity of the task ahead. And... Uh, the horses get a taste of what's to come too when they run the gauntlet of all the people at the gap, not realizing what's going to come when they get over on the front side and face 150,000. The walkover begins when we return. The Derby horses are assembling at the gap in the backstretch and soon to begin that long walkover to the saddling paddock in the run for the Roses. Let's check the odds now. And Super Blitz at 36, Brancusi 26. That's what I'm talking about. Peace Rules holding at seven. Funny side of 14 to one shot. Awfully wild, 25. Buddy Gill at six. Indian Express nine to one. Lone Star Sky Domestic Disputer long shots. Empire Maker seven to two. Only six Derby favorites have ever gone off at seven to two or higher. Eye of the Tiger, 10 cents to shine. Out of here. Long shots, 10 most wanted is five to one. And Scrimshaw at 14. Well, there's one glaring omission in the list of top jockeys riding in the Derby here today. Lafitte Pinkai, who was hoping for one more Derby victory. But today, Lafitte, emotionally anyway, rides in the saddle with Tyler Bays on Indian Express. And they're off. It's all Swale. He's there by four lengths at the wire. It's Swale winning the Derby. Gets it by the 16 pole, I knew how the race won. And I'm telling you, I start feeling really good. <laughs> is the most unbelievable feeling that I ever felt in my whole career. The only Derby victory in the storied career of racing's greatest winning jockey. A boy from Panama who set the sport's ultimate mark. As the big, big guy junior becomes the well-known guy winning a jockey. But even the greatest altered as age and infrequent wins became intertwined. You have to learn to take the good days and the bad days. And that's something that I, it took me a long time to learn how to do. I, I couldn't take the bad days. As he matured and, and he got older, he got to appreciate the game for what it was, winning and losing. He's learned to, to leave racing at the racetrack. New attitude, a better diet, and faster horses. It was all coming together. Pinkai craved another derby win, but needed a horse, which he found in a most unlikely place, and reached out to a friend. Lafitte had had a tape. Uh, the agent told me that he wanted to uh, show me. You know, the tape looks great. You know, the horse was a big, long striding horse, you know. They just say that there's never been a horse run this fast before in town. So uh, I actually bought the horse and brought him up here. With Indian Express, he's obviously, he's an improving colt. And Bob Baffert, he's an absolute wizard with sophomore horses. 
he is two or three year old thoroughbred what Leo Mazzoni is the starting pitcher. He knows how to get him cranked and ready to fire that first Saturday in May. So the team was set. Indian Express was on the Baffert plan, and Pinkai hoped to ride him all the way to the Derby. That was until the odds caught up with him in March. Request in the pink, Trampers two up to take him on. McManus is losing ground. Rosie Justice now gets, oh, oh, Trampers two went down there. I had no chance to think of nothing. Just, it just happened so quick, and I just, all of a sudden, I just hit the ground. So I was very lucky that the horse, the horse, I almost rolled on top of me. He almost hit me, you know, he just missed me. That could have been paralyzed. 99% of the time, with this type of injury, he would have ended up in the chair. His physical makeup kept the bones from breaking in and severing the spinal cord they broke out. And if not for his physical conditioning, this could have been a lot worse. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good as 20-year-old Tyler Bayes gets an opportunity of a lifetime, his first derby mount, replacing a legend. Today marks the end of an era. Now in retirement, Pinkai remains thankful for his one trip to the derby winner's circle. I wish I could uh, have that experience again, you know, but one for me was enough. This was all his doing. He pushed me to buy this horse, so the only thing missing from this is my feet not right now. This is, this is his derby. And there is the horse ending express, the horse that Lafitte Pinkai would have ridden. Now in retirement, that halo holding his head in place came off a couple of days ago. He's on the mend, and his record, of course, uh, is one that will stand for a while, one would guess. Bob Baffert, his wife Jill. Here is the career of Lafitte Pinkai. And one thing that was heard throughout the backstretch this week leading up to the Derby, all the top trainers saying, young riders, look at Lafitte Pinkai, try to emulate him if you want to know what being a top jockey is all about. All right, the horses are on the walk over. We'll join them. The Churchill Downs Oval beneath the Twin Spires, the 129th Kentucky Derby. Let's recheck the odds. That's what I'm talking about. Peace rules still at seven. And six to one on Buddy Gill, nine to one Indian Express. Empire Maker still seven to two. And ten most wanted at five to one. And the man of the hour, Bobby Frankel, has begun the walk over, and Donna Barton is with him. Bobby, you've won three graded stakes on the card so far today. You said when this horse was loading into the gate for the Florida Derby that you suddenly were overcome with the premonition that not only he would win, but he would win easily. Has winning three graded stakes given you any sort of a premonition about the Kentucky Derby? I, I feel good. I really do, and uh, I don't know, but I, I feel very good, to be honest with you. Well, I think it's safe to say that this is one of the most regally bred horses in the world. At what point did you know you'd be walking over here the first Saturday in May with him? Well, you never know, really, but he, uh, he gave me a little chill the first time I worked over Medallia Doro, so we knew we had a runner, but it takes a lot to get him over here. Absolutely. When did you start mapping out his racing path to get him here? Uh... After he broke his maiden, I decided I'd never run him short. I just wanted to run him a mile and eight, and no shorter than that. Well, my, you, know, you know, Bob, I have to ask you about this much-publicized Bruce Foote as you're walking over here with the Kentucky Derby favorite. With all this adrenaline, he's feeling no pain. Neither are you. No pain. Okay, well, what about Peace Rules? I mean, you have another horse in the cart who has an excellent chance. Do you think he's been overlooked? Oh, definitely been overlooked. He's a good horse. The only question I have is, like everybody else's, the distance you know the one horse i know will get the distance and he's questionable but he's a game horse bobby good luck to you yeah. all right mike going to you thank you donna with wally delasi the trainer of 10 most wanted and wally this is your third walk over just tell us about how exciting this is. everybody still has a chance to win at this point oh definitely and uh, boy what a thrill for us when i say us i'm talking about my grandkids my wife and my son-in-law and the owners are with me, and I'm just very, very excited. My daughter Amy's leading the horse over. Can't beat it. You really can't. And Craig, of course, saddled Ello Love in the Oaks. Oh, let's get Cincy out of the mud there. <laughs> saddled Ello Love in the Oaks. She won the Ashland. This is definitely a family horse. Oh, definitely. And they work hard at it. And uh, it might be our turn today. Who knows? We'll find out. 
what happened with this horse before the Illinois Derby? How did he make such a dramatic improvement? Well, he had a bad experience in his third race, and he was thinking about it in the fourth race. And then uh, he had a very good experience with Pat Day on him last, last time he ran before the Illinois Derby, and it paid off because he was very relaxed going into the Illinois Derby, Derby and he absolutely rated perfect. Well, Wally, he looks great right now. He's walking over. He looks perfectly composed. The second choice right now, good luck, Wally. Kenny Rice, over to you. Thanks, Mike. In 1981, 18-year-old Jeff Mullins won his very first race. That was at LeBois Park in Boise, Idaho. The jockey was Gary Stevens. 22 years later, they're reunited with Buddy Gill, winner of the Santa Anita Derby. Jeff, uh, Buddy Gill came to you in January. At that time, the owners at one time thought about putting him up in claiming races. Why did you decide that he was better than them? Well, I just felt like the horse was going to get better. Uh, we, we give him a little bit of time and let him kind of tell us when it was when it was time to go on and uh, the first time we breathed him this horse showed a lot of talent and uh, we just I, I didn't dare run him in a claiming race he has won three straight graded stakes the last two in photo finishes we talk a lot about guts and determination but he really seems to have that he he does have a lot of guts I mean uh, the horse you know last time took a lot of dirt and uh, it caused him to bleed just a little bit and he still dug down and got the job done so uh, I think if it comes down to an eyeball contest we're gonna get a hundred percent from him and that's all we can ask okay good luck Jeff certainly if uh, Jeff and Gary are back in the winner's circle together today that will be framed in the big picture and put on the wall at the Mullins house back to you Tom I can imagine Kenny and of course Jerry Bailey hopes it's his picture that will be in the winner's circle he's on Empire Maker and right now he's with Bob Costas Bob all right Tom we're with Jerry outside the jockey's room let's get right to it should all those people who bet on Empire Maker be concerned about the foot injury you know I'm not a veterinarian but I talked to Frankel day before yesterday and he said Jerry don't worry about it so I'm not going to worry about it on paper Empire Maker appears to be the best horse in the race what combination of circumstances could defeat him today well I mean extreme bad luck could and, it, and that can happen in the Derby but I can have a modicum of bad luck just a couple of little things don't go right I can lose a little ground and if he runs the races that he ran in the Wood Memorial and the Florida Derby, he could still win. You've talked about this horse having triple crown potential. I believe he does. Uh, the hardest thing to do is, is it, at the end go a mile and a half, and I think that's his strongest suit. But before that, the, strong, the hardest thing to do is to get through all these horses in the Derby. Your son Justin is 10 years old. When you won your first Derby in 93 and your second in 96, he had just been born the first time. He's a three-year-old the second time around, much like the horse who won. Grindstone was a three-year-old, but he wasn't able to share it with you. Now, at age 10, he could. You're 45. As the years go by, how important is it to you to win a derby that you can share with your kid? Well, it's been a driving force of mine for the last several years. Since he's been old enough to come and appreciate it and know what his father does, and I don't have very many years left, this might be my best chance uh, the rest of my career, so it would mean a lot to me to win it for him. Jerry, good luck today. Thanks, Bob. Jerry Bailey. Let's go back to Tom. All right, Bob, and there is uh, the paddock where the horses will be saddled, the throng ringing it, and right now Peace Rules has been one that's been acting up a bit. We noticed Peace Rules brought over earlier in the week to school in the paddock, as they say, to give them a chance to become familiar with those surroundings, and he was a little agitated then, and he has uh, been settled down at the moment, but perhaps a little worked up in the paddock. Peace Rules, the other Bobby Frankel horse. Back to Churchill Downs right after this. Official photo of the jockeys as the fans uh, eyeball the horses in the paddock roaming around now and awaiting the trainers and jockeys to join them there. The jockeys okay, just a moment ago having their official yeah, photo made to document the riders in the Kentucky Derby. Well, Charles, those horses will soon be saddled in the paddock and equipment has been very much in the news here. In fact, a, a piece of equipment has helped Empire Maker and that's what I'm talking about. Connections hope it does the same for him. Well, when a horse isn't performing up to expectations, a trainer will often turn immediately to a set of blinkers. They limit the horse's peripheral vision, focus their attention straight ahead, and makes them more rapid. And that's a good thing in a racehorse. <laughs> uh, Bobby Frankel put them on Empire Maker. He responded by winning his next two starts. That's what I'm talking about, who you're looking at there. is going to be wearing blinkers today for the very first time. That's a bold move in a race of this caliber. But he did not perform up to expectations in the Santa Anita Derby. They're still a little baffled as to exactly why. He's trained well in these blinkers. They're very small cups. They're not very severe. Empire Maker doesn't have his on yet, but they are very, very effective. 
Well, Empire Maker has uh, continued as the favorite, but only lukewarm. Nothing like the six to five morning line odds. Recheck. Super Blitz and Brancusi still long shots. That's what I'm talking about. And Peace Rule has been holding steady at seven all afternoon. Buddy Gill at six. Nine to one on Indian Express. Three to one Empire Maker. So he's gone down now to three to one odds. Eye of the Tiger, 10 cents to shine, and out of here are the long shots. Five most wanted at 5 to 1 still, and Scrimshaw at 14 to 1. Well, it is somewhat shocking that Empire Maker has been going down steadily, but nowhere near what we expected. Let's go to the handicappers, and maybe they can sort things out. Tom, there is nothing certain in life but death taxes, and Mike Battaglia are picking the favorite in the Kentucky <laughs> Derby. So what else is new? You know what? This is a lukewarm favorite. Three to one. I still think this horse is going to go down. I cannot believe that this horse is sitting up there at three to one. He should be six to five. I know you have to be an idiot to pick the favorite. I love this favorite. I think he stands out against this field. Bobby Frankel is a magician. He's going so good right now. Look at the way this horse won the Wood Memorial. You watch Gary Bailey, that funny side on the inside of him. He's not looking at him. He was looking outside to see if anything else was coming. There was nothing else coming. He was never worried. He knew he had the horse on the inside beat. He could have drawn off. He could have won this race by as many lengths as Jerry Bailey wanted him to win. Bobby Frankel has brought this horse into the race off four straight mile and an eighth braces. No other horse has ever come into the Derby off four straight mile and an eighth. He's been prepping this horse for the Derby since his first race. He's bred to get the mile and a quarter. He's going to love the added distance. This horse is a standout. He wins by many. Mike, it's all well and good if this was Wednesday at Podunk Downs, but this is the Kentucky Derby. And you know and I know that the favorite never wins the Derby. One for the last 23. So... Hey, he looks good on paper, but let's pick the uh, shopping cart and push it down some of the other aisles. And one of them is 10 Most Wanted, and he is the steam horse of this week, the hot horse. He's been working brilliantly. This race in the Illinois Derby was sensational under Pat Day. Has the right style for the race with patient Pat coming from the back. My only question to him is, he a one-race wonder? Then you go to Peace Rules. He's won four in a row. He's won five out of his last six. He showed in the Louisiana Derby that he's versatile enough to come from off the pace. My question about him I'll be frank, is the distance. He doesn't even speak in the same breath about this horse in Empire Maker. I said the question is the distance. Now we come uh, to the meat finished yet? of the meal. No. <laughs> Good stuff. Same for last. <laughs> okay. The Santa Anita Derby. Buddy Gill and Indian Express. This was a corker of a stretch drive. Indian Express, who ran a courageous race on the inside. Buddy Gill on the outside. Buddy won it by a head. Indian Express, the Baffert trainee, has only run four times. I mean, you have to go back to the Woodrow Wilson administration to find a winner that has run only four times. Courageous. But Buddy Gill is the choice. No negatives. Three for three. Should set a nice mid-pack trip under the veteran head of Gary Stevens. Empire Maker. He gets the job Empire done. Maker, the biggest since his Holy Bull. How'd he make up? He finished 12th, but this one's going to win. And here is the way the cyber cappers see the race. Ten most wanted, and Empire Maker getting 17%, and Buddy Gill 11%. Only one favorite has won since 79. I don't know how long it's been since Mike and Bob picked a winner. Well, you know, it's now been 25 years since the last Triple Crown winner affirmed in 1978. It had also been 25 years between Triple Crown winners back in 1973. Citation had swept the series, but few were thinking sweep in 73. That's the subject of our Buick Derby moment. Thirty years ago, when Secretariat came to Louisville, many experts had doubts about his ability to get the mile and a quarter distance. Now, of course, we realize how great he was. But after a loss in the Wood Memorial, his last prep before the 1973 Derby, there were skeptics. Silencing his critics, Secretariat not only won the race on his way to the Triple Crown, but set a mile and a quarter track record that still stands. Back at Churchill Downs on Derby Day, there's Kent DeSormo, a Pat Day right behind him. The jockeys have been given the call to report to the paddock. They'll go down those steps into the saddling paddock where they'll consult with their trainers one final time. There's Jerry Bailey, who is aboard the favorite Empire Maker. And Empire Maker has been steadily moving downward in the odds. That's what I'm talking about now, up to eight as Peace Rules continues at seven to one. Buddy Gill, six to one, nine to one Indian Express, three to one on Empire Maker. Ten cents to shine, 32 to one. That's one of the Wayne Lucas 
trainees as is Scrimshaw at 14 to 1. Ten most wanted continues to rank as the second choice at 5 to 1. There's the favorite Empire Maker as Bobby Frankel talks with Jerry Bailey before the call for Riders Up when we come back. The 129th Kentucky Derby as post time approaches for okay, let's go. the race. Riders Up! And there is the call Riders Up from the Paddock Judge. Jockeys given a leg up by their trainers. There's Super Blitz, Rosemary Holmeister aboard. Grand Cousy and the French jockey Tony Farina. And as the riders go up, they make a half circle there of the paddock and then they'll head for the tunnel. Make their way to the track. That's Jose Santos on funny side. We didn't see any problems uh, really to speak of in the paddock as the horses were there. Bob Baffert with a leg up for 20-year-old Tyler Bays aboard Indian Express. And there's Empire Maker, the favorite. Bobby Frankel gives Jerry Bailey a leg up. Next in line, Aya the Tiger and Avar Koa. But most eyes on the Empire Maker. Empire Maker has schooled very well in the paddock here. That's sometimes been a question about his behavior in the paddock, and he was very quiet and docile every time they brought him over. So clearly his uh, temp diff difficult temperament is not going to be an issue today. And shortly that grand moment, the playing of my old Kentucky home, the contrast between a song full of nostalgia and the anticipation of what will shortly unfold, a look back, a look to a hopeful future, and it all begins with a call to the post. Staff and horsemen of church will now proudly present the 129th running of the Kentucky Derby. Please rise for the playing of my old Kentucky home. Churchill Downs is pleased to welcome the University of Louisville marching band directed by Dr. Frederick Speck, my old Kentucky home. Sixteen horses for the 129th running of the Kentucky Derby. Number one, Super Blitz, 0 for 5 this year, ridden by Rosemary Holmeister Jr., only the fifth lady jockey in the Kentucky Derby. None have ever won the junior to differentiate between her mother, who's a trainer in Florida. Number two, Brancusi, an international tent here. Michael Tabor's an Englishman, the owner. Patrick Biancone and Tony Farina, transplanted Frenchman. Second in the Bluegrass Stakes, his last start. 
Greece or Cherokee scratched. Number four, that's what I'm talking about. A huge horse with a mean streak. In fact, trainer Ron Ellis has the bites to prove it. Blinkers on for this race. Fourth in the Santa Anita Derby and a bit of a disappointment in that race. The five horses peace rules. Bobby Frankel's quote other horse. He's the richest in the race. A million one hundred twenty four thousand. But millionaires coming into the Derby are 0 for 18. But he's won four in a row including the bluegrass. The six horses funny side trying to become the first gelding since Clyde Van Dusen in 1929 to win the Derby. They're 0 for 74 cents. It would also be the first New York bred to win second to Empire Maker in the Wood Memorial. The seven horse awfully wild battled a lung infection was off from February to April then ran third in the bluegrass. 42 years T.D. Smith has been training. This is his first derby horse. The eight is Buddy Gill. Idaho connection here though he was bred in Kentucky raised on a farm in Idaho. Owner trainer jockey all with Idaho connections. He's won three in a row including the Santa Anita Derby. The nine horse is Indian Express trained by Bob Baffert the one that began his career in Panama and the only Utah bred ever in the Kentucky Derby. Baffert calls him his Panamanian Ute, a sensational second in the Santa Anita Derby. The 10 horse Lone Star Sky, 0 for 4 this year. The only horse from last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile to make it to the Kentucky Derby in 2003. 11 domestic dispute was just recently sold and then taken from Bob Baffert and given to Patrick Gallagher to train and then put in the Kentucky Derby third in the Lexington in his last start. The 12 horse is Empire Maker from the broodmare of the year Tucson owned by the Judmont Farm. She lives in a double wide stall air conditioned and heated at the farm just outside Lexington Kentucky with her companion goat. She is the best mare in the country without a doubt since the blinkers on two for two. 13 is Eye of the Tiger, second in the Lexington, his last start behind Scrimshaw. Abarcoa, who is the leading jockey at Gulfstream, just completed is the rider. 14 is 10 cents a shine. That's what owner Ken Ramsey did growing up on the weekends in eastern Kentucky. Wayne Lucas is the trainer. Calvin Burrell, the jockey on this long shot. The 15 horse is out of here, who made the trip to Dubai. There's out of here made the trip to Dubai to run in the UAE Derby. He's the only horse in the field that has been the Derby distance of a mile and a quarter. He was fourth in the UAE Derby. The 16 is 10 most wanted a lot of play this week. He's been the buzz horse around here. Pat Day is in the saddle. Wally DeLossi said his lucky number is three. This is his third Derby horse. It's May 3rd. This horse won the Illinois Derby the same race that produced last year's winner war emblem and Scrimshaw trained by Wayne Lucas. He is his record 41st Derby entrant. He had this same pattern for Scrimshaw that he had for Charismatic who won the Derby in 99 and Proud Citizen who was second last year. That's a prep in the Lexington Stakes which he won at Keeneland just two weeks ago. And there is your field of 16 for the 129th running of the Kentucky Derby. So the horses are on the track for the Derby. This is the moment. It's the first Saturday in May. Kentucky Derby Day. Empire Maker is the chosen one. But the challengers are plenty and they're ready to pounce. One hundred twenty nine years of action. Of emotion of horse racing's best, all beneath the twin spires of Churchill Downs. Someone's dreams are about to come true. We're about a minute till post time for the Kentucky Derby. We'll update you on the odds there. Seven to one piece rules, six on Buddy Gill. The Empire Maker. Now at five to two, so it has gone down significantly. There he is, number 12. and. Charles the Empire Makers one to watch as they load in the starting gate. Well, we've made note of his eccentric behavior. He has sometimes been sulky to load in the gate. Therefore, he has stood in the gate quite often. It's a common procedure with racehorses. It helps them settle. You take them to the gate, let them stand, back them out. They don't break. Bobby Frankel has schooled him extensively, but he had a little clash of uh, philosophy with Roger Nagel, who is the head starter here at Churchill Downs. Bobby likes for the door to be open, as you see in the shot right there. Uh, likes for the door to be open so the horse can see down the racetrack. They'll walk in more readily. 
Roger Nagel does not care to do that with his horses, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. We need to watch right now to see how they load Empire Maker because the starting gate can be a tripping point in his very smooth sail through the paddock and warm up today. Well, Donna Barton Brothers is out there on horseback giving a close look to Empire Maker and others. Donna? Yeah, Tom, I talked to all of the connections of the Derby starters this morning and over actually the past week, and everybody said that their horses were good, well-behaved, they didn't expect for the crowds to be a problem, and unbelievably, the crowd hasn't been a problem. We've got 16 head of horses out here, and not one of them has turned to hair. That's good to see. Looks like a, a, a fair playing field, Tom. Bob Newmeyer. When Jerry Bailey won the Kentucky Derby aboard Sea Hero and Grindstone, he credited a traffic-free trip. How does he do it? He told me earlier in the week that what he likes to do is pick out a quality speed horse and follow him to stay out of trouble. In other words, he doesn't want to get stopped behind a horse that might stop at the half-mile pole or the three-quarters. So look for Jerry Bailey if he ducks, and he said it might either be Peace Rules, number five. It could be Indian Express, number nine. It even could be Funny Side, number six. Depends how he breaks, depends where he is, but he likes to follow a speed horse as long as he can to stay out of that critical traffic in the stretch, huh? All right, Bob, and there is the starting gate as they come to it now. We told you that Sir Cherokee was scratched. He was the three horse, so they're gonna leave the inside stall, the one closest to the rail vacant. They move Supa Blitz and Brancusi out one stall, and they'll have 16 in a row lined up to start this mile and a quarter Kentucky Derby. And we've talked about the pace scenario, Indian Express, the Bob Baffert horse is very, very rapid. I can expect to see him on the lead. Peace Rules and Funny Side should be right in there behind him. And here is Empire Maker. Let's see how he loads. This is kind of the moment of truth for him because you start a fight with this cold. He's very, very difficult uh, personality-wise. If they fight with him, it is not going to be a good scene. He is, I don't can't see whether the doors are open yet, but he keeps swinging his rear end around to the side, and then they need to get him to go straight in. And usually when doors are closed, there you see the front shut, and that is what Bobby would prefer to have had him loaded with the doors open. There's Bobby watching. This is something, ah, there we go. Loads right in. Bobby certainly would be relieved now. And so Empire Maker is in, and now for the call of the 129th Kentucky Derby, let's go to Tom Durkin. And the final horse is taking their spot. There goes Funny Side into his post position. The odds board now reading five to two on the favorite, Empire Maker, who was bred for greatness, and this is his chance to prove it right now. He stands in the starting gate, the favorite in the 129th Kentucky Derby. There goes the blue collar, Buddy Gill, into his post position. Out of here, who's been running in some pretty exotic courts lately. Uh, uh, number nine, Indian Express, a horse that may very well be the front runner. Also another horse you might look out, uh, he's breaking right next to Empire Maker that could be on the lead is Eye of the Tiger. And there goes 10 Most Wanted, who has been training sensationally. And there is a record 41st starter, Scrimshaw, for trainer D. Wayne Lucas in the run for the Roses. They are in the gate. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. Scrimshaw breaking on the far outside. Peace rules. Frank Cousy is also right there. For the outside, Eye of the Tiger. Indian Express got caught in behind horses in the early going as they move by us for the first time. And it is Frank Cousy in front. Peace rules now moves to second. Eye of the Tiger is third. Funny side for the inside is racing fourth. Scrimshaw five wide into the first in fifth. And Indian Express in a world of trouble strangled in behind horses. Indian Express a very tough time of it in the early stages here. The Domestic dispute is running seventh in between horses. Jerry Bailey has Empire Maker eighth and on the outside. Super Blitz is ninth. Awfully Wild is tenth. Then it's ten most wanted. Three ride on the back of the pack. He's eleventh on the outside. That's what I'm talking about. Is now running in twelfth. Buddy Gill way near the back of the pack. And then it's out of here. Lone Star Sky and ten cents a shine trails the field. The half went in a grueling 46 and one fifth seconds. Peace Rule and Brancusi head to head with five furlongs to go here. Funny Side is called on for run as they approach the half mile pole. Eye of the Tiger fourth and twirling on the outside. Then it's Domestic Dispute who slips through in between horses. Scrimshaw in with the chance. He's only five lengths from the lead. Jerry Bailey is now launching his bid with Empire Maker. And there they go. They're moving on the outside. Sixth a moment ago. And now they're fifth on the outside with three furlongs to go. They've run three quarters in one, ten and one. They're approaching the top of the stretch. Funny side to the neck of Peace Rolls. Empire Maker charging hard. A 
sustained rally for him on the far outside of the turn for home. By the Tiger, Frank Cousy has spent domestic disputes in between horses. Scrimshaw is calling. Off the wild there on the outside. They're coming down to the final furlong. And the gutsy gelding funny side has a narrow lead. Bobby Frankel's derby deal will piece rolls to his inside. Empire Maker is giving it all. Funny side trying to pull up. The upset here. 12 to 1 coming down to the line. And the gutsy gelding funny side has won the 129th Kentucky Derby. With Chucky Jose Santos aboard. And it was dead tight for second between Frankel's horses. Peace rolls and Empire Maker. That's what I'm talking about. Put in a belated run to be third. They ran a mile there in 135 and 3. It was a blistering pace up front. And this most elusive of all horse races has once again eluded Bobby Frankel. A New York red gelding, the first New York red in history, has won the Kentucky Derby. The odds were 12 to 1. Jose Santos delighted. Jerry Bailey, he had a perfect shot at the top of the stretch, but he could not get by this fiercely determined winner. Tom Hammond, back to you. All right, Tom Durkin, funny side, turns the tables on Empire Maker. He was beaten only a half length by Empire Maker in the Wood Memorial. Everyone says it was only because Empire Maker wasn't uh, being pushed by Jerry Bailey, trying to save something for the Derby. Well, funny side was challenged down the stretch today, and Empire Maker and the others could not catch him. The first gelding since 1929, and he's won the Kentucky Derby. Jose Santos with Donna Brothers. Jose Santos, last time I interviewed you, you pulled the upset on Balcony in the Breeders' Cup. How's it feel to win your first Kentucky Derby? Get with the program. New York Bread. New York Bread? Excellent horse. I cannot believe I win the Kentucky Derby with this horse. I say only in the year, last year, I told my agent we win the, the Breeders' Cup classes that we need now to win the Kentucky Derby with Derby. You have won the Kentucky Derby. Jose, this horse was second beaten only half the length, though, to Empire Maker in the Wood Memorial. Did you feel pretty confident that he could last the mile and a quarter, maybe turn the table? I think the distance was only helping him, you know. Last time was from and a and he was making a strong effort to catch the other horse. But uh, I guess people don't believe in this horse, you know. He's a gelding, and he's a New York bred. And we coming with the Kentucky Derby trophy back to New York, back home. How do you think he's going to feel about a mile and three sixteenths in three weeks? Uh, I think he have a great trainer and uh, he have a great program with him and uh, I think that this time one and three sixteen going to feel an even better. Congratulations, Jose. Tom, as you can see, a very jubilant and deservedly so. Jose Santos. Yes, he is done. In fact, uh, Jose referred to it. He was aboard Valpony for the upset in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And now he upsets at 19 to 1 in the Kentucky Derby. Funny side giving Barkley Tag in his first Derby horse, the Roses. In fact, Tag trained him in New York, didn't bring him here till Wednesday, and a disappointed Bobby Frankel. He saw both Peace Rules and Empire Maker in striking distance, and they could not get by Funny Side, the horse that Empire Maker had beaten in the Wood Memorial. Funny side, Empire Maker second, Peace Rules third, second and third for Frankel, but little consolation as once again the Derby eludes him. Barkley Tag, the third debut winning trainer in the last 18 years, and he decided that he was going to keep the horse in New York until the last minute virtually, brought him on Wednesday to Churchill Downs. He said sometimes when horses train over a new track, it doesn't quite suit them. They're not quite used to it, and they get a little muscle sore. Well, whatever he did, it worked because Funny Side today was challenged in the stretch by the two Frankel horses, and they could not get by him as Funny Side holds on for the win. The disappointed Jerry Bailey as well. He's with Bob Newmeyer. Well, that's right. Then the elusive Derby for Bobby Frankel goes by the boards. Jerry, tell us about your trip. A little wide on the first, broke well and avoided any any nasty stuff by the stands the first time. Got parked a little bit wide in the first turn, but I kind of anticipated that. I thought he was good enough to overcome that. Had a nice clean trip down the backside. And when I asked him, he went to him, but he didn't do it with authority like he did in the last couple of races. Struggled getting to funny side, and of course he didn't have enough to put him away. 
to take a look at the stretch drive and Santos is slashing on funny side. You're on his flanks now. Did you think you had a shot at this point? Well, actually by here, I, I knew I didn't because he had struggled too much around the turn. Uh, getting to the horse put him away. But really, I thought in the far turn, I, I had to beat that horse. I beat him in the wood. I thought I could do it. People are going to ask about the injury, Jerry, whether that was a factor. Could you tell underneath today, was it any different than it was at the wood? No, he went to his leads correctly. Uh, he didn't favor anything. I certainly couldn't tell anything. All right, Jerry Bailey, disappointing finish aboard the big favorite empire maker. Let's go to Mike. Thanks, Bob. With Pat Day and Pat Penmos one of was one of the most hyped horses coming into this race. He ran a huge race in the Illinois Derby. What happened? Did he not like the track? Did he not get the trip? Uh, you know, I, I really got no plausible excuse for uh, for what is certainly at this point in time a, a rather poor performance. Uh, we got squeezed just a little bit right away from the gate, but uh, we, we settled in going into the first turn. Uh, was just a, a couple of links back behind uh, Empire Maker up the backside, and uh, I thought we was in a good spot. Uh, going to half mile pole or inside the half mile pole, everybody started to pick it up. I asked him to go ahead and hold his position, and there was just no response. Uh, he he, he uh, just kind of galloped on from from there to the wire. He galloped on out strong. He just didn't drop down and, uh, and accelerate like I anticipated that he would, and I've got no no excuse for that. With 16 horses, did you see a lot of trouble out there? It looked like a fairly clean race. Maybe a couple of them had some problems. Uh, it looked like somebody jammed up a little bit into the first turn, but I think it was pretty clean from thereafter. You know, uh, from my vantage point, uh, I was I was up on the outside, lost a little bit of ground, but still I, I uh, I'm just not sure why uh, why my horse didn't get down and, and give me a little better effort. All right, thank you, Pat. A disappointing day for the Delossies and for Pat Day, a very hyped horse, ten most wanted, just didn't fire today. And another favorite goes down, Mike. And funny side turning the tables, he had finished third behind peace rules in the louisiana derby second the empire maker in the wood memorial but he wins the one that counts now four wins in six lifetimes starts a million two hundred thirty nine thousand in earnings and he had a lot of firsts for him the first new york bred the first gelding in the last 75 attempts the last Clyde van dusen in 1929 and the first kentucky derby winner not to have worked or raced over the track since bold forbes in 1976 a lot of firsts today by funny side a three-year-old gelding by distorted humor from bell's good side by Sluicide, bet in new york by windstar farm owned by sakatoga stable and trained by barkley tag and there's clyde van dusen 1929 the last gelding to win the kentucky derby geldings had been O for 74 until today Jose Santos in the irons, a jubilant Santos who guided his horse to victory in the Wood Memorial. Trainer Barkley Tag switched Funny Side to a Houghton bit. It's a bit restrictive and makes the horse easier to control, but doesn't pinch his mouth. And Santos appreciated that extra control as he turns the tables on the two Frankel horses, Peace Rules and Empire Maker, who had beaten him in his last two starts. And the race is official. Here are the prices. Funny side, 27, 60, 12, 40, and 8, 20. Empire Maker was second. Peace Rules third. The Exacta worth $97. The Trifecta, 664. And the Superfecta, $2,795. Another big upset in the Kentucky Derby. We're back to Churchill Downs for the trophy presentation in just a moment. Welcome back to Churchill Downs where the traditional garland of roses being placed across the withers of Derby winner Funny Side and jockey Jose Santos. Another shocking result in the Kentucky Derby and our great aerial views today courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships reminding you to take all of life's journeys on the wings of Goodyear. Well, there's been a lot of talk all week about perhaps that first turn would be eventful as there were several horses that preferred to go to the lead or close enough to it. And Indian Express was the one who suffered most of all. This is Indian Express number nine. And he will be the one that will suffer most of all. Pinched right away coming out of the starting gate. Lone Star Sky to his outside came over a bit in front of him. And the trouble continues for Indian Express and young 20-year-old jockey Tyler Bays as they head down that stretch for the first time and into the first turn. Brent Cousy 
with Tony Farina in the saddle, went out to set the early fractions, and Peace Rules was right on his outside. Peace Rules and Edgar Prado. Those two into that first turn with Brancusi on the inside, and Peace Rules on the outside. Now, Funny Side is in behind them in third. Number six, you see them. Jose Santos in the maroon and gray. Number six along the rail, just biding his time here as Brancusi has a half-length lead on Peace Rules. Moving up on the outside of Funny Side is Eye of the Tiger. But Santos right here just going along, content to let those two pacemakers go in front of him and waiting, waiting, waiting with Funny Side. Many thought Funny Side would be one of the ones that would show the way early. But Santos found a stalking spot here right behind the two leaders. Now, Peace Rules goes by Brancusi here. That's Peace Rules who opens up a length on Brancusi. He's fading, and Funny Side goes right after him. Santos now begins to ride on Funny Side, and he's narrowing the gap here on Peace Rules. Meanwhile, three wide, here comes Empire Maker in the green and pink. They're approaching now the top of the stretch. They've got a little over a quarter mile to go. Peace rules on the rail in front, but it's funny side that comes between horses and three wide is Empire Maker. And now the battle is on. Peace rules under the whip on the rail. And between horses, funny side sticks the nose in front. Empire Maker, Jerry Bailey working furiously left-handed, can't make up any ground. That's funny side. Left-hand whip from Santos. Switches to the right. Hits him again. And here comes funny side holding off the two Franco horses to win the Kentucky Derby. And here's the complete order of finish. Funny side wins it. Empire Maker and Peace Rules, the Frankel horses, second and third. That's what I'm talking about. Had a late close. He ran fourth. As you see, the order of finish with Brancusi, the early pace setter, fading to finish 16th and last. Headed back to the stable area, the hero of the moment, Funny Side, to get a welcome bath and a few pats from his admirers. Among those up here in the winner's circle, Funny Side's owner, Jackson Knowlton, Barkley Tag, the trainer, and jockey Jose Santos will visit with Charles C. Canty in just a moment. Among the dignitaries here, Carl Pasquarella, president and CEO of Visa USA. $5 million out there if for the first time in a quarter century, a horse, and only one, Funny Side now has a chance, can be the Triple Crown winner. Bob, I think uh, you're right. It's been 25 years since uh, a firm and we're ready to give the $5 million. Uh, we at Visa are just very, very proud to be a part of this uh, wonderful day and a part of the Triple Crown. Thank you very much. Tom Meeker is the president of Churchill Downs Incorporated, and uh, he will introduce the governor of Kentucky to make the trophy presentation. Well, it, uh, first of all, it's a great day for Kentucky. It's an even better day for New York, I think, today. Uh, but it gives me great pleasure to introduce our governor, Governor Paul Patton, to present the trophy to the, the new winner of the Kentucky Derby. My pleasure to present on behalf of Churchill Downs this trophy representing the most exciting two minutes in sports, the Kentucky Derby, on behalf of a great athlete that was well-trained and well-ridden. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you, Governor. This is just such a thrill for us. We're just the little guys in the game. We have a three-horse stable, New York Breads. And it's a great day for the New York Bread Program. We're just thrilled to represent not only the New York Bread Program, but New York Racing. We were the only horse to come from New York this year, based in New York. Barkley Tag has done just a spectacular job training this horse from day one. He picked the horse out. We bought it privately in Ocala about a year ago. Jose Santos has ridden this horse in each of his seven races. He's never run a bad race. And today, he saved the best for all, and we are just excited beyond belief. Jackson Knowlton, thanks very much, and congratulations. Let's go to Charles C. Cannon. All right, we've got a winning two veterans. Two veterans here, Jose Santos, Barkley Tag. Both of them winning their very first Kentucky Derby. A beautiful ride by Jose Santos and a sensational training job by Barkley Tag. A colt whose distance was questioned, a distance ability. Did you know he would be able to handle the mile and a quarter? You trained him that way, obviously. I didn't question it. No, I didn't question it. <laughs> you said that you heard that he was, that Empire Maker was not winning as easy in the Wood Memorial as everyone said, that he wasn't. He was all out to beat you. Say that, that, uh, I heard a couple people say that, that I had a lot of respect for you. Yeah. I'm not going to tell who they are, though. <laughs>
And your assistant, Robin Smullen, your groom, Zachariah Quintana. The horse looked sensational. He ran Robin a great job. Do all the work on him. Robin and Zach do all the work. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Another from the Hall of Fame steeplechase training group. Now we have another great steeplechase trainer making a big splash in flat training. Jose, congratulations. Barkley, congratulations. Thank you. We'll go back to Tom. All right, Charles C., uh, what about that? Six high school buddies are the owners, and they win the Kentucky Derby with the first New York bred to take the roses. Funny side. Don't miss now the next leg of the Visa Triple Crown. The Preakness Stakes comes to NBC two weeks, Saturday, May 17th. Tom Hammond for all our crew at NBC. So long from Churchill Downs.